person on the other side, give them a high five, an air high five, you know. Those COVID cases are coming up, all that good stuff. <laughs> amen, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Welcome to our first team Sunday of 2023. Woo! Okay, thank you, Pastor Alicia. All right, how about everybody else? Woo! <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. We are in a good place. We are super excited about all that God has designed. Can you all hear me okay? Yes. We are super excited about all that God has designed for us and destined for us in 2023. I believe that we're standing at the precipice of a year that's going to change everything. I don't know. I didn't um, feel what I'm feeling now leading up into the new year, but I literally feel like something has shifted. I feel like those things that were just sitting under the surface have started to sprout up. And so I want to say to you all to not lose your excitement, don't lose your edge, don't lose your pursuit. I know that sometimes when you come out of a hard season, when there are things that you're navigating through, sometimes it kind of feels a little dull, right? And so I want to encourage you all to maintain your edge, move into this year and get everything. Tell the person next to you, say, I'm getting everything in 2023. Everything in 2023. Everything in 2023, come on, not just for me, but for my family, come on, for my sphere of influence. Everything that's in my jurisdiction will be full this year. Come on, come on. Everything in your jurisdiction will be full this year. Those that you have jurisdictions over, come on, I'm telling you, I believe that those things are going to respond to the God in you in unusual ways this year. Someone say amen. Amen. Amen, amen. So we are in our first team Sunday. For those of you who are um, watching online, who are new in the room, I want to share with you that Team Sundays is our platform to really go in deeper into living out the kingdom purposes of God. So we are going to be training, equipping, empowering, and mobilizing you to take dominion in your sphere of influence, okay? This is a model that we were so graciously allowed to pick up and incorporate it into what God incorporate into what God has called us to do from my father, our father, Archbishop Ralph L. Dennis, if you could celebrate him. <laughs> and it is trademarked. Um, and I want to pause and say this um, because my big brother, Bishop Gregory Andre Dennis, come on, you all celebrate him as well. Um, as I was working through this with Dad, um, Bishop G is really stewarding and taking um, that which Dad has um, uh, released within the context of Kingdom Worship Center, and he is driving it in the earth. It is under his sphere of rulership, and so he allowed us to pick this up, and so as much as I talk about um, my dad and our father in this capacity, I wanted to make sure that I honored their yes from my big brother, or we would not be working this out um, in our model. Amen. Amen, amen. So as we are diving in for this Team Sunday, we are focusing on a specific theme this quarter, which is business, leadership, and professional development. And so if you're in here in the room or if you're watching online, I want you to raise your hand if you are connected to corporate America in any way. Okay. All right, all right, good, good, good. Glad to see that. Um, I, although we're focusing on this specific title for this afternoon, Navigating the Corporate Experience, I do believe that the principles that will be shared today, even if you're not within a corporate America context, you may be military, right? You may be in the entrepreneurial lens. I still believe that if you are dealing with people, raise your hand if you're dealing with people, you're dealing with systems. <laughs> I believe that it is going to assist you, even for those who just may be in a church context providing support, I believe that the information shared will be able to assist you. So I hope you're taking notes. Let me see what you have items to take notes. All right, good, good, good. And this is going to be um, set up where we have, of course, the opportunity to dive into Q&A as well after our teaching moment, okay? All right, so I wanted to share two whys. It's always important to be able to communicate the why behind the what that you are doing, okay? And so the first why to why we are doing what we're doing within the context of Team Sunday is mandate. Someone say mandate. mandate. We are mandated to go into all the world, not just church on Sunday. <laughs> All right. And here at Destiny Global Church, we recognize the seven mountain mandate, which are the areas of cultural influence. Come on. They are arts and entertainment, media, government, education, family, religion and business. OK, 
We do this in a church context because we are trying to pave the way to make sure that people understand that the microphone and the pulpit is not the apex of purpose. What's resting on the inside of you may not fit into the confines of the four walls. Okay? All right? In order to advance the kingdom, we must participate in the earth. Tell the person next to you, say, you got to participate in the earth. <laughs> so you showing up on your job is purposeful, all right? You going to the grocery store is purposeful. You being planted in your family is purposeful. You being in the community of friends, all of that is purposeful. Someone say you have to participate in the earth. If not, we run the risk of being so heavenly minded that we only live with the end in mind and miss out on the effectiveness of our faith in the earth. Your faith is effective when it is active and interwoven into your sphere of influence, okay? Where it's beyond your mind, beyond your heart, and it shows up in the way that you do business. Someone say, active in the earth, okay? We are salt and light, and the outcome of godly people in godly rulership or on these mountains is this. One, a nation being exalted and its people rejoicing. And so if we look at our landscape of our nation, the areas of influence, we can tell that there is a war or a difference in rulership in those areas because typically people are not rejoicing. I mean, look, we, do we even have a Speaker of the House? They just did, okay. Right, 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 okay. So um, we understand that there is a byproduct of the righteous being in rulership. Someone say it's a byproduct a right, righteous people being in rulership. That's why we need to be in every single mountain of influence, okay? All right. So the second uh, why, and I wanted to make sure that I took some time to do this, is to share a little bit of my story. So why am I qualified to talk to you guys about this specific information, okay? Because a lot of times you want to make sure that you're listening to someone who has something to share or some history to impart concerning the area that they are um, coaching you on, okay? That's why you don't deal with somebody who's coaching you around certain things and they don't have the success areas in their life. Is it okay for me to say that? Okay, all right, all right, okay. So I wanted to walk through just a little bit of my story in corporate America, and this is giving me some feedback. Can you all hear that? You can, and I don't know if we can fix it, bring it down, do something with it. Um, not sure, but if we can, that'll be great. Um, so I have been in corporate America since the age of 15. Y'all are like, what, 15? Y'all remember work study? Okay, all right, all right, so how many did work study? Where you got to go to a few classes? Pastor Alicia is looking like, <laughs> that must be <have> new. <laughs> yeah, work study where you take a few classes and then you break for the rest of the day and you go and start working. My, um, so that's when I started landing in corporate America, okay? 2023 for me, and you all do not pay attention to your apostle over in this corner when I make this statement, okay? 2023 for me marks 28 years in corporate America. <gasps> Y'all don't look. And everybody looked over there. I said, don't look. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Elder Siler. He, he, he kept guard. Thank you. So, but I wanted to say this, that even though it's um, 28 years, my actual career started forming at the age of 20. And by that, I mean where, you know, you're kind of moving through different things and not really in a pocket of space. How many have had, like, certain jobs and then you finally get to a space where you're like, oh, this is it, okay? All right, so began forming around the age of 20 in the sales arena that to me not that um, was direct marketing okay so uh, y'all I sold Kirby vacuum cleaners that's you laughing real loud <laughs> I sold Kirby vacuum cleaners okay from there I moved into the insurance industry and um, currently in banking and finance the finance industry for 15 years okay um, my current space in this role is U.S. Director of Facilitation of an international organization. And what we do is that we provide support to multiple entities across three time zones, multiple lines of businesses, supporting over 10,000 employees, also providing support for offshore partnerships, including Mexico, Costa Rica, and a few of the Caribbean islands. And so I want to say that I went from Kirby vacuum cleaners to countries by the grace of God. And so I want you to know that it does not matter where you start. And I want you to know that the job or the space that you are in right now may not be the thing that you are looking for or the thing that you're even comfortable in, but God can take the seed of your faithfulness where you are and take you to places that you have not dreamed. 
you would not have been able to tell me that I would be doing this in corporate America. Like, it was a dream, but actually getting there, okay? So I wanted to pause and say that. So I'm going to say from Kirby to countries, by the grace of God. So what is your quantum leap? Think about where you are right now. And so at the top of this year, I want you to dream big. I, I really do. I want you to get your vision boards out, dream, and think about what your quantum leap in the space of corporate America or your career would look like. And we're going to give you the blueprint and the framework in order to get there. Can you all hear me okay? In 2023. Okay. All right. So with that being said, across the expanse of the last 28 years, my average promotion or where I was given new responsibility window has been every two years. Okay. The longest stretch that I've had without any type of significant movement or growth has been about five years. And so my goal with this workshop is to share some of the wisdom that's been won over the years to assist you with surviving, sharpening, and soaring within the corporate America framework, okay? All right, let's jump in. We can go to the next slide. All right, so our agenda here is on the screen. And for those of you who are watching online, I hope that you have the ability to see this. So our agenda for this afternoon, we're going to start with definitions, okay? We're going to make sure we bring everyone into the same space of our understanding with definitions. Next, we're going to discuss the importance of decisioning. We're going to then move through what I like to call the career cycle. So if you're taking notes, it's a good place right there, the career cycle. Nesting, nav next, and navigation, okay? And it actually should be nesting, next, navigation, and next, all right? All right, so that's the career cycle. So if you're taking notes, capture that there. So for your consideration, I want to give you two quotes for your consideration. And I'm going to actually ask you all to participate. This first quote says this. Let's go to the next slide. That money is a cool master, but a great servant. Money is a cool master, but a great servant. And this is actually a quote that I saw on Facebook a few weeks back from um, Bishop Carl Montgomery that is part of the our fellowship that we are part of, KFCM. So when you hear that statement, what comes to mind? It can either help you or hurt you. Good. What else? Any other thoughts? Pretty much it? You all agree? Deacon Mike? Choose wisely. Yes, yes, yes. I love it. Very good. Next quote is by Oprah Winfrey. She says this. Passion is energy. Feel the power that comes from focusing on, y'all pray for my eyes, on what excites you, okay? When you hear that statement, what comes to mind? What's your passion, right? Maybe if you're in a place where you're feeling drained, it could be related to a passion disconnect, okay? Okay, all right, good, good. Now, Two of the key influencers around your participation and success in corporate America are money and passion. Those two influences sit under everything, okay? You either do it for the money or you do it for the love. And you get in a sweet spot when you have both, okay? Or you're miserable if you don't have either. Anybody ever been there? Y'all, my second job was in Pizza Bowlies. And when <laughs> I say I was miserable, I was like, why do I have to come home? Smelling like these pizzas, okay? I needed the money. <laughs> and then I realized I wasn't getting paid enough. <laughs> All right? So I was absolutely miserable. Left there. Okay. All right. So um, I want you to ask yourself, where am I in this current space in relationship to money and passion? Write that question down and answer it. I'll give you a few seconds. For those of you who are watching online, ask yourself that same question. How do I feel about my current compensation package? Y'all okay? You're like, ooh, we talking about this at church. <laughs> okay, so first question, how do I feel about my current compensation package? Next question, how do I feel about my roles and responsibilities? Why? Because your roles and responsibilities are directly related or unrelated to passion, okay? All right, and I want you to really answer those questions. And now I'm going to ask you to find one person in the room to share your answers with. Yes.
Yeah, so the first question, how do you feel about your current compensation package? If you guys are online and you don't like have your name, your real name, you can answer it. If you have your real name, don't answer online. Just in case your, <laughs> case your job is watching, all right? <laughs> how do you feel about your current compensation package? How do you feel about your roles and responsibilities? <laughs> Someone over here like, I'm about to lead them all. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if you're being intentional about your space, you have to know these things. You have to consider these things. I see these good discussions happening. <laughs> All right, about 30 more seconds. Saints, y'all all right? <laughs> you are right, baby. <laughs> I love it. For those of you online, the questions again are, how do I feel about my current compensation package? And how do I feel about my roles and responsibilities? All right, share your final thoughts. It's only slide three. Hold on, hold on. It's only slide three. <laughs> All right, let's come back together. Let's come back together. Tell the person next to you, say it's going to be all right. <laughs> so if you're online, type that in the comments. It's going to be all right, OK? <laughs> but hear me, self-reflection is important. Someone say self-reflection self is important. A lot of times, we do not pause to check in with ourselves. We'll check in with our boss, right? We'll even ask our friends what's happening in their space. But we do not stop and pause a lot of times to ask us ourselves those two questions, okay? Now, in order to navigate, we need to know where we are, or in other words, we have to be able to communicate to communicate our longitude and latitude. Someone say longitude, longitude. and latitude, okay? So longitude is vertical. With money, how much can I build with what I have, okay? Latitude is horizontal, how satisfied am I, as, am I with growth, reward, and fulfillment, okay? All right, let's keep going. Our next point that we're gonna take a look at is decisioning. Someone say decisioning. decisioning. All right, I have a, our next slide here. Oh wait, did I jump? No? Yep, so decisioning. The slide that says one plus one equals. Okay. All right, yep. Decisioning, very good, all right. So one plus one equals? Two. Okay, does it always add up like that in corporate America? No, no, no. Okay, all right. So then, so then I need to make sure that you are managing what you can control. Because apart from that, you will walk out, walk off, <laughs> and everything else that can come with that, okay? All right. Um, there is something that is um, so um, disheartening when you feel like you are in a place of injustice and have no control, okay? And so the key when you're navigating corporate America, because some things are outside of our control, and I'm specifically hitting this here because you will not hear me talk a lot about culture in this presentation because culture sometimes of the entire organization, based on where you are, may be outside of your control. And so you then control what you can control, which is? 
Me, myself, and I, okay? All right, now, to, uh, I'm gonna give this to you. So one plus one equals, and we're gonna say we're not quite sure. So if we are controlling these things, the first one, okay, that we're going to have here, so the first one is gonna be representative of critical thinking. So write it down, critical thinking. This is so important in corporate America because based on cultural dynamics, you will lean more into what you feel versus thinking about and putting a strategy in place based on what you want. So I wanna say this, yes, you will feel the corporate environment, but your mind has to be stronger than your feelings or you will blow up, bow out, or bend and miss opportunity. So blowing up, is when you start getting um, into a place where you are um, hostile with your boss or with the people around you, okay? Bowing out is where you still work there, but you ain't really there. <laughs> Anybody ever had anyone <laughs> or been there yourself, right? Um, it's actually right now, we, uh, I believe the term right now is, um, is quiet, quiet, quiet quitting. quitting. Quiet quitting, okay, all right? Or you will bend. That's where you compromise your skill set or what you bring to the table so much that you are now on the inside, you are not satisfied with how you are showing up, okay? And then based on that, that thing right there, you'll then miss the opportunity that you really want. Someone say, I am going to be a critical thinker. Okay, the next piece that we're gonna add on, so the first one is, okay, the next piece we're gonna add, contributions. So critical thinking plus contributions. Listen to me, I know people will tell you <laughs> that what you do does not matter, but what you produce in your assignment matters. Tell the person next to you, say, you've got to produce. You've got to produce. Okay, so critical thinking plus contributions equals consequences. Critical thinking plus what you contribute, will determine your consequence or your outcome, okay? Consequences are this, outcomes of performance, pace, and partnerships. So consequences in this scenario, based on your critical thinking, based on your contributions, the consequence of those, or those two things are outcomes, excuse me, of our performance, pace, and partnerships. Now I'm staying all of this absent of any significant HR issues, okay? So I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna act like those things don't exist, all right? But I just wanna give you a framework to work towards success, okay? And all of this is part of the cycle of navigating corporate America, or wherever you may be, if it's people there, there is some type of system or guidelines that you have to work within, okay? All right, so I'm gonna add, um, here we're gonna pause again for those who are watching, those who are in the room. Ask yourself this question, how am I doing with critical thinking on my job? When's the last time you had your bright idea? <laughs> When's the last time you contributed a bright idea? When's the last time? <laughs> When's the last time? You all can hear me? I cannot hear myself, okay. When's the last time you innovated a process or a step? And maybe it's not critical thinking for them, but when's the next time you set yourself up for success? Or do you have a plan for your trajectory or your area in corporate America, okay? Next, what have I contributed? This is that time of year. <laughs> Annual reviews, performance evaluation, money discussions, right? What have I contributed? What do I want to contribute as I move into the new year? Okay? And then lastly, how have my consequences been? How's my performance? How's my pace? And how are my partnerships on my job? So ask yourself those questions, just jot some quick thoughts. All right, so the first one is critical, good. The second one is contributions and the outcome are 
Very good, 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 good. All right, let's start bringing definition to some of our information. So we're gonna look at the definitions for the following. Someone say navigate. navigate. Let's go to the next slide. Should be the one that says definitions. Looks like they got switched around there. Yeah, yep, one down. Yep, right there, thank you. All right, definition, so navigate. Someone say navigate. navigate. The definition of navigate is to plan and direct the route or course of a ship, aircraft, or other form of transportation, especially by using instruments or maps, okay? So again, to plan and direct the route or course of a ship, aircraft, or other form of transportation, especially by using instruments or maps. Second definition, to sail or travel over a stretch of water or terrain, especially carefully or with difficulty. So let's look at this a bit. A ship, aircraft, or other forms of transportation. That's the first part of that definition, so let's pause. So we're looking at multiple vessels that travel over varying terrains. Each vehicle has a unique design and operating model, all with the same end goal to reach a destination. So hear me when it comes down to navigating the corporate America experience, there's no one way to get there, okay? So for those of you who have been hard on yourself because you have a specific trajectory in your mind and it has not looked like that, you could be robbing yourself of an incredible destination because the journey has not looked like you expected it to. Some of you have said no to specific jobs because you feel like you have to go up the ladder. And listen to me, hear me, I am an HR executive. Listen, in 2023, there is no more corporate ladder. It is a jungle gym. <laughs> hear me. What you do, and this is it, because the old framework is that I cannot take this next position unless it gets me higher up. In this world, you have to consider what skills I can gain if I take a lateral move. What skills I can gain if I jump industries. And a lot of times we're afraid to jump industries because we have not recognized that we do indeed have transferable skills. Okay? All right? Come on, say there's no one way to get there. Come on, say it loud. There's no one way to get there. Okay? All right, all right. So you have to release yourself from the pressure. And a lot of times we um, hold ourselves to someone else's career path or their trajectory. We kind of hold ourselves, we saw so-and-so do it this way and so now we hold ourselves to this. Specifically, if you have someone close to you or in your sphere of, uh, sphere of influence that is successful, then you try to literally walk directly in their shoes. Release yourself from trying to um, pattern yourself after producing Peter or Perfect Patty. Those are my personas. <laughs> Producing Peter, a perfect patty, that may not be your course, okay? Tell the person next to say, it's okay. it's okay. Chart your own course. Okay. The second part of that definition is over a stretch of water or terrain. Listen to me, the landscape of your career will vary. You can move from hospitality to finance. Yeah, I'm telling you. You can move from criminal, criminal justice into arts and entertainment, okay? I want you to know, someone say, I can have a multifaceted career, okay? The next part of this is, a, uh, the de definition was especially carefully or with difficulty. So carefully with intention and a plan because it will not be easy at all times. Someone say, I have to be careful I have to be intentional, which means I need a plan. Let me see a show of hands. How many of you have some type of IDP or plan in your current role? An individual development plan, okay. Or even if you don't have one officially in corporate America, you kind of have some, a set series of goals or something like that, okay. All right, if you do not, I want to challenge you, and if you're online and you do not have a set plan, I want to challenge you to sit down and think about putting together a series of steps and goals. It could be classes that you need to take. It could be a mentor that you need to grab. It could be um, anything along those lines that will get you to where you need to be, okay? So we all have our definition of navigation and further understanding into what that looks like. All right, let's jump into the career cycle. 
Nesting, someone say nesting. We're gonna go to slide number six, nesting, very good. All right, so one of the business areas that my team supports is um, our call center. So we have call centers in Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, Texas, Arizona, and also with our offshore partnerships. And in the call center environment, after the new hires leave instructor-led training, they go into what we call a nesting period. It's a time where they are sitting in an area, they're on the phones, and they are taking calls under direct super supervision, okay? All right. That means that they are put in a place where they have an opportunity to apply what they have learned with intentional closer support and parameters in place to minimize risk and also maximize their development. Okay, So that is the corporate America call center um, environment of nesting. Next, we actually have the bird nest. Anybody ever seen a bird nest before? Okay, I know you probably have one in your house. Like they just by the light on the porch, you know, okay? An actual bird's nest is a safe place to raise young, to be fed, and for those small birds to grow into their full expression. They'll, they'll, they'll start to take better shape. Y'all ever seen a baby bird? That thing is not cute, right? So if they're like, oh, you like a little baby bird? Uh-uh, no, I don't. <laughs> don't say that about my kid. No, I'm just joking, okay? All right, so for their, uh, that bird to grow into its full expression. So why am I saying this um, and relating it to the corporate America experience? A lot of times when we move into a new position, and again, it does not have to be a formal position or take on new responsibilities, there is this nesting period, either formally or informally. This is the time for you to glean and develop where people are not normally expecting maximum production from you, okay, all right? Now, um, typically if you're in sales, there's some type of period where your goals are in half, you know, and that type of thing, right? Um, but this nesting period, I want to encourage you to take advantage of it, okay? So if one of the big um, uh, benefits of this period when you're moving into a new role is that you get to, remember I talked about how the bird comes into their full expression, you get to rebrand yourself. So if you never went to work in your last job, you get to show up for work now. Y'all are looking at me like, what? You get to recreate your professional brand with each new opportunity and each new opportunity for, um, with increased responsibilities. So I want to ask you right now, how would you market yourself or what would you do differently if you had an opportunity for a fresh start? Okay, write those things down. Pick three things that you would change or that you would do differently. Whether it's internally, Something that you just want to be responsible for, you could be like, look, I want to make sure I don't lose my temper. <laughs> and listen, when I talk about losing my temper, a lot of times in corporate America, you may not blow up and throw papers, but you can be hostile without throwing papers. Somebody ask you something, that ain't my job. <laughs> yeah, right? Okay. In addition to that, the next thing, because so that question was around your personal brand, what would you do differently? Who do you need that's different? So if you have only two or three people that you talk to at work, you probably, in new opportunities with new responsibilities, need to look and see who you need to leverage to nurture you in this new space. Come on, think about a bird in a nest. That mama is coming to give them what they need in order to grow and develop. What new mentors? Inside your job, outside of your job, okay? How do I maximize this nesting period? And the reason why I'm saying this is because the way that you start sets yourself up for success following that incubation period. So ask someone next to you, how are you starting, okay? How many of you have started a new job recently? Let's see, okay, good, good, good. All right, all right. Someone say nesting. nesting. How many of you have a mentor? Someone that's feeding you, bringing you information, helping you out, okay? How many of you are the mentor? Okay, good, good, good. 
All right, so I want to challenge you because this is our format, like development, right, and deployed. Um, I want to challenge you in 2023 to make sure you find a mentor or you become one. And it does not have to be some massive commitment. It could be once a quarter, okay? Just something in order to sharpen yourself and to give back. Someone say nesting, okay? Let me pause here. What questions do you have about the first component of this cycle? Go ahead, Deidre. environment yet yeah, where it's just it's still the same thing they just have an actual structure for it it's literally um, sitting with people answering call, phone calls they're listening and giving you coaching so that mentorship dynamic yeah. okay all right let's keep going someone say navigation navigation, navigation. so this is where you're there and you have to start living in the culture of the job that you are in. Someone say navigation. navigation. You've been at your job longer than like a month, you are navigating. Someone say, I am navigating. Oh, yeah. And when you navigate, you are going to deal with personalities, oh, problems, your own potential, or the potential of your team, the potential of your organization, and plans, both yours and the organization's plans. Someone say personalities. Problems, potential, and plans. And hear me, it is your responsibility to navigate those things. So when it comes down to personalities, everyone is not going to act like you want them to act. <laughs> okay? And so in order to set yourself up for success, you're going to have strong personalities, you're going to have great personalities, you're going to have uh, uh, um, um, conflict personalities, like all of these things. In order to set yourself up for success, you need to understand people and their communication styles. So if you are not fully aware or have not taken time to look into DISC, Strength finders, come on, write these things down. Disc, strength finders, um, what are some other of the um, anagrams? Um, Myers-Briggs, right? I know there's some conflict around Myers-Briggs if it's fully um, backed by scientific sci science and all of that. But you should be a student of people. Because apart from being able to handle people dynamics, they will cause you to forfeit your advancement in the corporate America environment. I am telling you that I have, uh, be careful, in my career, let me make sure I say this uh, uh, safely, in my career, I have selected people who may not have had the uh, uh, top qualifications because they were good with people. Do you get that in interview process? If they had success with teams, all of that matters because it is hard to deal with a difficult person. So the same way that you don't want to deal with a difficult person, your boss doesn't either. So if you're that difficult person, come on, it's the beginning of the year. It's a good time for self-evaluation. All right? And listen, we have to be truthful with ourselves. Because if not, we'll keep blaming everyone else. And my boss is the reason why I am not moving up. No, you're difficult. Your personality is full of conflict. And so if you're going to navigate the space of corporate America, you have to have intel intelligence around people dynamics. Right. And you have to hold yourself accountable for developing in your personality. It's not on everyone else. Someone say, even me, Lord. Even me. Because the reality is, is that you can have the intelligence and skill and people will pass you by because you are difficult to work with. And so here in a Christian context, the other side of that equation or that coin is that we are representatives and ambassadors of the king. And typically you're like, girl, church was good on Sunday or God, church was good on Sunday. And you reckon the office? Or no one can tell you anything? or you don't complete your work? Someone say personalities. 
So I have to be intentional about building my personal aptitude, and I have to be intelligent concerning people dynamics. Okay? Someone say problems. 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 Listen, you will always have some type of problem in corporate America. It's either a problem that's your responsibility or a problem that's not your responsibility that you still have to solve for. Someone say problems equal opportunity. Hear me. I'm telling you the reason I have had consistent success throughout these years and whenever there's a problem that people are complaining about, I figure out how to solve it. So write down this problem. Identify a problem that you're looking at in your, in your current environment. So if you're online, identify a problem that's in your current space. And I'm challenging you to come up with a solution, even if it doesn't solve the whole thing, but to make it better. One of the things that I learned early on was how to compliment my boss, whoever I was working for. I would pay attention to their patterns, I would pay attention to the things that were going on around, and I would figure out how I can fill in that gap to be of assistance on the team. And what that enabled me to do is to get access to how my manager, who was in the position that, of course, I wanted to get into how they thought, okay, how they navigated, and then access to their relationships as well. Someone say problems are opportunities, okay? Now, the reality is, is that will you be able to solve for everything? No, but contribute something. Or listen, if you can't solve it, at least don't become part of it. So let's say the office environment is critical. Don't join in. Let's say everybody calling out. Don't call out. Like it's really sometimes super simple but we don't realize it because again, back to that one plus one equals, that critical thinking, we get so emotional, specifically if it's a problem in corporate America, because again, culture, you're gonna feel it. You gotta step out of those feelings and sit with the Lord. Come on, Christian believers, sit with the Lord. What is the strategy for this? You have the central intelligence agency of the universe resting on the inside of you. You can solve for something. Okay, someone say potential. So when it comes down to navigating potential, um, this is something that is so, 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 so tricky because a lot of us don't believe that we can. And so we don't put ourselves out there. So let me do it this way. Someone say, in this year, I'm going to take on a stretch assignment. This year... I'm going to volunteer for something that feels uncomfortable. This year, I'm gonna take a class that's in my area to work the God potential that is on the inside of me. Y'all are right. <laughs> okay, hear me. We have unbelievers who are outpacing us because we do not take risks in the area of potential at Christians. If it ain't neat, we don't want it. Listen to me, potential is not neat. The discovery of your potential, it is messy. It is risky, it is uncomfortable. But I'm telling you in those, I'm not preaching, I'm teaching. In those exact places. <laughs> just felt a fire like rise up. <laughs> Team Sunday, not Destiny Encounter. Left my day job. Woo. <laughs> Just okay. Got a rock or something. Okay. No, but it's not. And as Christians, we get we fall in love with comfort and we miss living on the cutting edge of innovation and the uh, potential to create new streams, new solutions, new teams. I've had pe think people create things for me. Because I jumped out there and said, hey, let me do something with this. Y'all, I lost my shoe. Okay? Can they see that on the internet? <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. <laughs> Y'all, we in a new building, and I'm getting used to it. I will not step on that crack anymore in 2023. <laughs> my husband is over me. Someone say potential. Potential. 
Y'all should come in for Team Sunday. Someone say, y'all should be in the room for Team Sunday. You never know what's going to happen. <laughs> All right, someone say potential. potential. Ask yourself where you are right now, what areas should you press into? Oh, let, me, let me do it this way. What feels risky to me today? Ask that yourself that question and write down a quick list, at least two things. What feels risky? <laughs> Another way that I can ask you to dive into this a little bit further, what is it that people say, you could do this, and you like, no, uh <laughs> You want me to call Bishop G? No. What is it? What is it that you talk yourself out of in the midnight hour? What is it that you have stopped dreaming about? Someone say potential. potential. Up next, plans, 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 plans. You need to be associated and closely acquainted with the mission and value and whatever the year's goals, is, goals are for your team and your organization. I would ask the question, but ask yourself, what, what do I know? <laughs> What's our mission? What's our vision? What are our 2023 goals? <laughs> What's the biggest problem that they're looking to solve? You need to know what the plan is at a high level so you can then come up with your plan intentionally, again, to bring solutions production and to partner with those in leadership. Someone say, my plans have to include production. Come on, all right? I need a people management plan. So if you have somebody that is wearing you out at work, you need a management plan for that person. You need a management plan for people that are reporting to you. They should not be in the same place with you as their leader. What stretch assignments can you give? And a lot of times we manage bad performance instead of developing our people. Come on, say you need a people management plan. And you need your own success plan. And even if it's not tied down to the current job that you are in, someone say, I need a plan. All right, all right, all right. Let's move to our next topic, which is going to be once we successfully navigate through nesting, okay, once we come up with our navigation rhythms, everybody stand up and do this. Now let me, uh -oh. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Let me try to stay on beat. All right, everybody together, come on y'all. All right, this is what navigation looks like. You are always keeping a rhythm between people problems, potential, and your plan, okay? So what's your navigation rhythm? What's your navigation rhythm? So after you nest, after you navigate, you set yourself up for next. Come on, have a seat, it's good, okay? Someone say next. next. All right, this is that same, still that cycle, okay? Someone say skills. skills. You have to have skills. <laughs> yeah, okay? You, it's not just about being nice. Let me tell you something. I have dealt with the nicest, most incompetent people over these last three months that I have ever experienced. And it caused me, hear this, it caused me to lose four work days, hundreds of dollars, and hours of my time. Why? Because they were nice, but they were incompetent. Nice is not enough in corporate America. Because you will smile yourself out the door. You're fired. Okay? Someone say, nice is not enough. I need skills. Okay? So skills. Skills are the specific learned abilities that you need to perform a job. An example would be coding. Okay? Have to have skills. Which is why, let me say this, which is why it is okay to uh, uh, be in a jungle gym versus the corporate ladder because you may take another job to learn additional skills that will assist you for that next step, 
okay? And you own it. Your boss, your manager, your leader is not responsible for your skill development. If you leave it to them, it may not get done. Say, I own my skill development, okay? All right, so we have, so this is, this is how we, uh, the rhythm of next. So skills and then experience. So it's not enough just to learn about it, you have to find a way to apply it, okay? So I, I pick up this new skill and then I gain expertise in the area, okay? Up next, competencies. Someone say competencies, okay? Competencies are the knowledge and behaviors that lead you to be successful in a job, okay? So the skill would be coding, but the competency would be problem solving. Do you see that relationship? So again, the skill is coding, but the competency is problem solving, okay? Then again, experience. So I gain a network, okay? Um, or I gain um, relationships, or I just take it to the next level in that specific area. And then next is change. Don't be afraid after you have developed the skills, gained some experience, developed the competencies, gained some experience, and then you don't do anything with it? <laughs> this is the person that takes class after class and then never jumps out to risk the next step in what they've been studying. Or the person who has done the job for 50 years and know it better than everyone else, but they're just scared to be the boss. Someone say, next is required, okay? Next equals change. You got to take the leap. So skills, experience, competencies, experience equals change, which leads you to your next. Okay? So ask yourself, based on where you are, what new skills do I need? Come on, if you're online, ask yourself that question. What new skills do I need? And this is going to be so important right now because we think about our, our, um, our um, focus for the new year the year of movement where we talked about um, uh, technologies, there is an entire workforce population that is about to be um, absolved as a result of artificial intelligence. Y'all see what's happening in McDonald's? You can go in and order yourself now. That is about to be what it looks like. I walked into a Walmart. I walked into a, I walked into a Walmart. It was somewhere around here. Um, Y'all know, because I don't know streets, I just know. <laughs> landmarks and I walked in to go um, I think I was trying to pick up an order and there was a machine so instead of the people that would bring it out to you there was a machine that you walked in you put your information in and it dropped your order so they didn't even need the people to bring out the orders for you and so I am telling you that this technological revolution is about to change everything. So if, specifically if you're in the service industry, um, uh, 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 you know, uh, yeah, yeah, all of those things, anything that can be replaced by computers, you have to now start learning new skills, okay? Because our world is changing, okay? All right, competencies, um, this is, you have to learn about competencies anyway. If you are going to go to what's next, you're going to interview, most organizations do be um, competency-based behavioral interviewing. So they're asking you questions about real life uh, experiences that you've had to test and see where you are in your level of competence. Okay, all right, okay. Okay, where was I? What question did I tell you guys to answer? What skills, very good, very good. And then what competencies do I need to develop? Okay. What skills and what competencies? And then don't sit on the work that you have done. Okay, someone say take the leap. Take the leap, okay, take the leap. All right, last but certainly not least, our summary of the point of everything that we are here to do on this afternoon is this statement here. It takes intention, someone say intention, intention. Tenacity, tenacity, and intelligence to scale the mountain of business. We are called to scale. I'm gonna say, I'm a mountain climber, okay? And when you're a mountain climber, you condition yourself for the ascent. This whole workshop is about your conditioning. It's not about the culture of the organization. 
right? It's not about what your boss calls you to do. This is about your personal conditioning to incubate the potential of God and to maximize God opportunities. I am prophesying to you that you are in here under the sound of my voice. You are watching online. I am telling you that there are divine moments coming to you in 2023, divine opportunities. And if you take this formula, you will start strengthening yourself to be in a position to walk through the door. Okay? All right, let's pause. Questions or comments? Yes, yes. So for those online and for those of you in the room who may not have been able to hear, hear, Pastor Tanya said you need to keep a record of those stretch assignments, of that skill development, of your success, because you need a file to make your case. If you're asking for an additional $10,000, you need to be able to say, this is what I've done in order to increase my skill set in this role, and these are the additional contributions that I have made in this current role to support this ask. Say it again. Yes, yes, yes. Very good. All right. Additional questions, comments? Okay. All right. Very good. I'm going to call up Apostle Dwayne. Come on up here with me, Bay, Dr. Bay. <laughs> Did you guys enjoy this workshop? Yeah. Navigating the corporate America experience. Corporate America experience. Did y'all enjoy this? Woo! Apostle Show, you're amazing. I was like, wow, this is really, really, really good. And I know it's different on a Sunday context, um, but we've talked about how we are kind of reimagining the church experience. And so we're going we're gonna to do church. We're going to do those parts well. But in addition to that, we want to ensure uh, that you all are prepared to handle and to walk out your faith outside of this moment. And a lot of times we spend time in the preaching and that part of it, but we don't have enough time to really train in this way to ensure that we are living out our faith. And we want to see you all live out your faith um, in a way that's successful, where you have money, where you are enjoying your life, where you have influence and that you're winning souls for the kingdom and the like. And so this is why we've done it this way. So we'd spend time, we still worship, we do our team and then we pray. So we want to pray, pray for you all. And uh, release impartation from um, this grace to walk in influence, to manage your moment, to manage your now so that you can step into your next. Uh, we want to pray and decree. I'm telling Apostle Charles stuff that she's going to pray because I'm going to stand here with her. Uh, we want to pray and uh, really believe God for the opening of new moments, the opening of new opportunities, uh, for God to sovereignly uh, position you in your in the space that he's called you to be for influence for your purpose for your destiny we're going to pray for those who say you know what i feel like i'm at a dead end uh, when it comes to career when it comes to my financial uh bracket when it comes to my influence for the kingdom we're going to pray that god opens things for you so that you can be positioned where you need to be and i think this is a good place to do it because we're at the top of the year and i don't know about you but i'm believing god this year that this really is not just for our church but it's my year of movement that i'm moving out of the places of stagnancy that i'm moving out of the places of stuck that i'm moving out of the places of frustration but i'm going to be positioned in the destiny and in the plan and in the purpose god has for me and I'm believing God that he's going to prosper our year, that not just financially, but our souls, that we'll be happy, that we'll be, our, our relationships will be flourishing, right? That our children will be flourishing, um, that there will be nothing missing and nothing broken, that the shalom of God, the peace and the wholeness of God is going to be our portion. So we're going to pray um, and then we will take the offering. 
Hallelujah. God, we honor you and we glorify you. We thank you, Lord God, for this time and this space. We thank you that you have in your divine sovereignty, Lord God, placed us in areas of business. We thank you that you have placed us in areas of um, significant contribution, Lord God, that you have placed us in strategic places within, Lord God, the seven mountains, Lord God. I pray that on this afternoon, Lord God, that there is fresh grace for these assignments. Hallelujah. I pray, God, that everyone that is under the sound of my voice, both in this room and online, God, that they would experience the fresh wind of your presence, that they would experience the fresh wind of grace. I thank you for taking some of the struggle and the strain out of their assignments in this mountain of business. God, I pray even now, Lord God, that you would allow these kingdom believers to be wise as serpents, yet innocent as doves. God, I ask for a new level of perspective perception and insight into the culture, into the systems, into the peoples and the patterns, Lord God, of their assignments in their spheres and their places of employment, God. I ask on today, God, that there is another level, Lord God, of competency and confidence. Matter of fact, God, I thank you for those that have the competence but not the confidence that keep backing up from new assignments and new opportunities, God. I pray now that their confidence would rise to your call, that their confidence would rise to their competence, that their confidence, Lord God, will rise to be able to extend into these new places, Lord God, these new spaces within this assignment, God. I thank you that on today, Lord God, that raises, Lord God, and bonuses that have been held up, Lord God, that they will be released. I thank you, God, that this year, Lord God, that raises, Lord God, that merit increases will be double of what they had in previous years, God. I thank you that even beyond what they've been able to see and imagine, Lord God, for their trajectory and their careers, Lord God, that you have a plan and a beautiful story, Lord God. And I ask, Lord God, over the next 30, 60, 90 days, God, that they see, Lord God, what you have written, Lord God, come to pass. God, I pray for those that are experiencing frustration that would dim their witness in the area of employment, God. I pray now, Lord God, that they would be able to set their face like flint and demonstrate, Lord God, the attributes of your spirit. Thank you that they will be fruity in the marketplace. Thank you that they will be fruity in their personalities on their job. Thank you that they will not, Lord God, be the problem, but they will be the solution. God, raise up these kingdom believers, Lord God, to be strong ambassadors of what you are and who you have called them to be in the earth. God, I ask even now for witty inventions according to Deuteronomy. You said that you give us power, Lord God, ideas, the ability to get wealth. God, thank you for there being patents that come out of this movement, Lord God. Thank you for inventions, Lord God, that come out of this movement. Thank you, Lord God, for programs and curriculum that come out of this movement. God, thank you, Lord God, for mentorship and development ideas and systems that come out of this movement. God, I thank you, Lord God, that everyone that's in here under the sound of my voice, that they will experience an open door. Thank you that those doors that were shut by manipulation and witchcraft in the area of corporate America Thank you that you are the God of open the, the open door and that once you open it, no man can shut. God, I come against every spirit of Jezebel that have met them in the marketplace. I come again, Lord, against, Lord God, everything, those, those things that will come, Lord God, as a result of manipulation and witchcraft. God, we decree and declare that it will bow to your lordship, that it will bow to the power that resides on the inside of them. Thank you, Lord God, that they will indeed be able to navigate navigate and scale without hindrance and hold up. God, I pray that these kingdom believers would have the confidence to engage again. I thank you for strategy. God, I thank you for patience. Do not allow, Lord God, them to abandon before the moment of birthing. I pray, God, for the appropriate networks that they need, Lord God. I pray for the appropriate mentors, Lord God. I pray for the sponsors. I pray for the sponsorship for education. I pray for the sponsorship of development, Lord God. I thank you 
that these your people, Lord God, as a result of this workshop, both those that are in the room and online, that they will come out sharper <laughs> and more stable and not afraid to blend their spirituality in the corporate space. Thank you for great victory and great success. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. So we want to uh, take a moment to give. Um, I know they have the, they'll put the giving options on the screen, but if you have it, um, we just want to take a moment to give. We have a big year coming up, you all. Um, and so your partnership with us really helps us push into the next space uh, for us. And so they'll, they'll put the giving options up. Y'all have the giving options to put up? Oh, they don't have them? Okay. Um, Cash App is dollar sign Destiny Global Church. Um, Givelify, I think, is uh, the same. Yep, Destiny Global Church. Okay, I need a thing. I'm going to need a thing that says it. Um, and if you have cash, uh, the hospitality team there in the aisle to serve you. While we're doing that, uh, we do have some announcements for you. Um, Pastor Alicia, I'm going to have you come give your announcement. You knew I was you knew I was going to do that. Uh, but <laughs> but uh, <laughs> this Friday is our first Destiny Encounter. Woo! Yeah, and I am excited. Um, I have a word. Pastor just tried to preach it on Facebook this morning, but I'm, I, you know, I forgive her. But I'm excited uh, for what God has to say to you all and um, what He's going to release. Our theme for our Destiny Encounters right now are open heaven. So we're going to be spending time dealing in the realm of prayer. So we're going to spend some time praying, uh, stirring the intercessors. We're going to pray and uh, release some things and. Uh, minister prophetically, but it is going to be an amazing time. So make sure that you're here and do me a favor. I need everybody to invite at least two people. Amen. Somebody say, I'm going to do it. No, I want you to say it out your mouth so the angels can hear it and heaven's going to record it. And I'm going to do it. Everybody invite at least two people. Let's come and let's bombard heaven. Um, Pastor Alicia, come. Is there another announcement that I'm forgetting? I don't think so. All right, well, Pastor Alicia, come on in. Let's give it up for the Evans family as a whole. <laughs> Come on up. They're gonna yeah, let me help you up. I have a, I'm excited. Uh, the Evans, these are our family care pastors. Come on, celebrate that. I'm so excited about this area of a ministry. It is the domestic side of a ministry. So what they're going to be able to do is really help strengthen when it comes to marriages, uh, singles, um, our hospitality is under that. But the domestic side of our ministry is going to be really supported and taken care of. So I'm excited about that. And they have already started planning our first event. And I'm excited for y'all to hear about it. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, guys. Um, we are doing our first marriage um, symposium, which will be February the... <laughs> February the 4th. February the 4th at 6 o'clock. It'll be here for married couples only. And what we want to do, we want to encourage you to come out. We, we do have a cutoff date of January the 21st, so make sure you get your tickets. Make sure you, um, we're going to have a great time in the Lord. We're going to talk. We're going to play games. But we're always going to be making a movement when it comes down to marriage. We want to tie into what our theme is this year. Um, Mike, there are flyers in the back. Um, we do have a limited space, so we ask you to get your tickets early. Say that to yourself. We need to get our tickets early. All right. So we want to um, thank you guys in advance. I'm excited. Are we going to dance? They're playing. They're playing. They're playing. Okay, we got, some, we got some plans. All right. I'm going to dance. I'm gonna sh I think a pastor Alicia said she's going to do the funky chicken. Is that what she did? <laughs> and I'm going um, to teach a pastor sure how to dance on beat. I, I got it. We can, she going to dance on beat. Um, also, hey, listen, we have a prayer line every Monday at 7 o'clock. We have a prayer line. Um, and it, our intercessors gather to pray, but it really is for our entire community. And so, you know, while you're laying in the bed, dust yourself off a little bit and jump on our prayer call with us. We'll get that um, 
I don't think we have it. Y'all know we're, tra we're transitioning into a new ministry, so some of our pieces we don't have yet, but we'll get that. Because we love for you to be on there because we have a call to pray. Um, and we want uh, to spend time praying for our church as a whole, our city, our region, um, whatever the will of God is. We want to partner with him in prayer. And as you remember, lastly, our schedule has changed. So second and fourth Sundays, we're here uh, for Team Sunday. And second and fourth Fridays, we're here for our Destiny Encounter. So let's have a good time this year in the year of movement. Apostle, you want to pray us out? All right. All right. Come on. Let's give God a praise for what he has done for us on this afternoon. Listen, um, if you guys uh, remember, I put up on Facebook that career coaching was going to be available. So if you have a specific scenario, if you just like some specific wisdom concerning what you want to accomplish for 2023, I'll be available to chat with you after church, okay? All right? All right. So let's look to the Lord. Let's stand on our feet. Tell the person next to you, behind you, say, this is your year of movement. This is your year of movement. Come on, say, let's make moves in the corporate space. Amen. Amen. Let's look to the Lord. God, we honor you. We glorify you. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your plans and your purposes, your provision for it all, Lord God. We thank you for what you have downloaded to us, Lord God, to be effective in our spheres of influence in the marketplace, even for those principles that are applicable, Lord God, to military service, Lord God, to education, Lord God, um, to every other mountain of influence, Lord God. We pray that you would continue to sharpen us this year and make our faith, Lord God, effective in the earth. I pray that you will cover this people, Lord God. Keep us as we leave this place, but thank you that we will never leave your presence. In, in Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Love you, family.